name is Chris from ChristopherHole.com and welcome to today's whiteboard presentation where we're going to be talking about principles of endurance training and I'm going to be using my 2017 uh, training plan and calendar uh, to be able to sort of get across some of the some of the principles that uh, that I use when I'm when I'm planning and putting together uh, my training for the year. Now, th there will be principles that you'll be able to use, but some of this is sort of individual to how it unfolded, but also how I train and the, the goals that I wanted to achieve. So with regards to some of it, it's just there to help you understand uh, what the principles are rather than the specific how long certain periods need to be and what you need to be doing in certain periods. Because that, that specific information will be um, for you to work out, but how it's structured is quite um, is quite universal if you can say that um, but what I will just quickly do is mention my social channels um, if you want to find out more and ask more questions about this kind of thing come to Facebook uh, which is Christopher Hole training come to Twitter which is at Christopher Hole or alternatively come to uh, the website which is ChristopherHole.com forward slash uh, workshops Click on the Painter Performance Workshop, which is an extension of what I'm talking about here. It's it's all about how to, to manage your, your fitness through a training season. So we talk about injuries, we talk about fitness training, um, we talk about different principles of how to put, put um, uh, fitness and managing injuries together. So it's it's yes, it's based on planning, but we also go through uh, three different workshops. So it's like foam rolling and stretching, core strength and stability and sort of um, uh, exercise technique workshops on there as well. So you can get the most out of um, your training plan for the year. So yeah, c come along to there. But back to uh, today's um, presentation. F sort of principle number one is, first of all, you need to plan your training. That's sort of number one. So you need to set yourself your targets. Now on here, my targets were the Mendip Hills, the Exmoor Hills, and the Brecon Beacon Hills. Those were my three targets. So you have to lay those out. And then what you do is you kind of work backwards from there. So I'll explain that in a second. So that's kind of principle number one. Principle number two is you need to be flexible within that plan. These weeks that the, the, um, the, the, uh, that my goals were achieved on, let's say, or my targets were achieved, weren't necessarily that week because of things like weather, because of other commitments that I had that appeared later on in the year and things like that. So it needs to be flexible so you can, you can manage that. Now, if you're doing uh, an event which is on a specific day or on a specific week, then you're going to have a little bit more of a, obviously, a commitment to fulfill it within that. Um, but what you will do, which I guess is then sort of principle number three, is you will categorize these targets as like uh, category A, B or C or category one, two or three or whatever it is, but it needs to be done in a priority. So the Brecon Beacons and Exmoor, they were my high priority. They were the ones that I wanted to be in sort of the best condition for. The Mendips was just a stepping stone towards that. So it's being able to understand that there is a priority to it. So number one, it needs to be a plan that we need to lay out ahead of time. But uh, principle two is it needs to be flexible enough that you can manage and manipulate that slightly. And then number three, obviously that then needs to be put into category. So if it's if it's races and events, you need to think, right, I want to do, I want to hit London Marathon or I want to hit New York Marathon. That's my priority A or category A or target number one. And then you need to build other events around that. So those are, I guess, sort of the first three principles. Um, what I will just explain now is the, the table and how it's structured. So over here is just simply the calendar. This is just the calendar of what happened. Here I've got my sessions on the bike, the miles that I did per week, and then the elevation gain that I had per week. Then I've got my, what I would describe as like my strength and conditioning. So this over here is like skill, which is the, the bike training. And then this is just strength and conditioning in the gym. And I've got obviously gym sessions, um, the total sessions per week, but then you've got all the different phases. So recovery, transition, um, endurance training, strength endurance training, 
you've got uh, strength training, maximum strength training, and power training. So you've got all those different categories that I, I, I again, would work on through the year. Now, if, if you uh, don't think you need strength and conditioning uh, with regards to weight training, things like that, I would encourage you to really think about it because it's, it has a massive benefit when it comes to um, being on the bike or being out on the road running, whatever it needs to be. Um, it, it does really hold um, a lot of uh, benefit for you to do that. But again, that's another variable to fit in because as you can see here, I've got different phases here and I've also got different phases here, and they both need to work together. So that again is another variable. So if you don't wanna add that variable in just yet, and maybe add it in later on, then that's fine. But um, I would certainly um, encourage you to think about a uh, strength and conditioning element and a skill element to your training. The skill being the running, the cycling, the whatever it needs to be, and then the strength and conditioning is the weight training in the gym um, that goes alongside that to support it. The strength and conditioning isn't there for me to um, hit certain targets where I would have targets for them, but it's not um, a major priority. The strength and conditioning is the means to the end. The cycling and the mendips on Exmoor and on Brecon, that is the end that I was looking for. So that strength and conditioning is there to support my means to the end rather than be the end in mind, if you will. So that's how um, the, the, um, the, table, the table looks. So... What we can now start doing <clears throat> is we can start thinking about, um, obviously I talked about the goals that we wanted to achieve and then working backwards from that. So obviously my category A were Brecon Beacons and Exmoor. So what I would do is I would put in a big um, sort of peak session. So this is me really getting ready for it. So this peak session is approaching the priorities. So you can see here I have four weeks to approach the priority of the Brecon Beacons. It's about managing intensity, but as you can see here, it was really building up towards it. So it's gone from sort of like a, a, a 2,700 uh, feet of elevation gain in a transition to 3,000, to 3,008, to 4,008, to nearly 7,000. So you can see there's a real big build towards it. So that is my, my peak phase. Now what I did before that was um, sort of a, a, a deload and um, recovery and transition before uh, going into that peak phase when I came off the back of Exmoor. So I did again that peak phase for Exmoor and then after it, as you can um, see here, let me just scroll down. After both my peaks, I did a recovery and a transition phase and I'll explain those in a second. But for the, you can see the two peak phases here is I had three to four weeks of building up towards it, obviously managing my intensities, building towards it, managing my intensities and building towards it. And then following that, I had a deload and recovery. Now, again, if I scroll back up, um, what we've then got is this build two phase. Now the build two phase, I, I basically trained through the Mendips. So this wasn't of high priority to me. So this happened in the middle of my build phase. So the build phase is basically where I started then to do more endurance training on hills. And then for build two, this was when I really ramped up my um, interval training. So if you can see here, build one, I kind of started at 3000 and maintained it and then as I moved into build two you can start to see there were a couple of four thousands again back into a three thousand a little bit of time off the bike and then build back towards that Exmoor where I hit five thousand and then it goes through a bit of recovery transition now the recovery and transition obviously recovery is there for allowing me to recover and rejuvenate the transition is a little bit more unstructured, but I'm staying active. So I'm just kind of building and getting ready for this next phase. So that's what the, the deload and the transition is for. But coming back to builds one and two, it's just getting back on the bike, getting on the hills, and really focusing, building up, building up, building up. I obviously built towards the Mendips, which was 4,500 um, feet of elevation gain over 42 miles in the week. So it was very much building towards building towards that. And then obviously training through that, getting ready for the peak, and then hitting 4,000, 5,000 uh, ready for Exmoor. So what I'm doing is I'm working backwards 
And then at the start of the year, what we had was because we just had obviously Christmas and New Year and uh, sort of end of season last season, it was very much focusing on base one and base two. So base one is just getting back on the bike. It's as simple as that. Getting back on the bike, getting some miles in the legs um, and just focusing on uh, a bit of technique and just getting comfortable being back on the bike, doing miles on the bike, getting comfortable in the position, so on and so forth. So that's obviously what that is. Obviously, you've got a weather dependent element to it. So you may need access to an indoor trainer or spin bike or something like that. Then when we come obviously into base two, we start thinking about a few more hills, a bit more intensity, bit more time on the bike you can obviously see here um, it was 650 elevation then it was sort of the high 1000s 1700 then I dropped off built back up 1819 2000 drop back off again and then build back up into the 3000s when I get to build one so when you're planning it that's how you do it you would work backwards so you would plan it like that you'd say right that's my target one two right they're my peak phases they're my um, uh, recovery and transitions but what I need to do early on in the year is build and put my base down early in the year so that's the kind of um, principle number four that you would work towards you would set your goals and you would work backwards from there so to just go through that um, in a more logical way so go forward through it through time what we are focusing on is base one is miles on the bike just getting back on getting the feel for it base two is um, is extending that and adding, depending on what your goals are, but mine was adding more elevation in and just adding more time in elevation. Obviously, you can see here I did three weeks, but here I did one, two, three, four weeks and then went back into a deload and then built back in. So we're spending time on the bike. We're getting some elevation into the legs. Give myself a little bit of time just to rest and recover. Allow myself to... Um, <clears throat> allow myself to rejuvenate. I actually had a sports massage course that I went on here, so that played a part in that um, in that deload and, um, and recovery. So then it was back into build one. So this was now building, building the miles and building the elevation. Obviously you can see here I'm building the miles back up, 30, 40 miles a week. It's not a massive amount. It's not a massive amount of hills either, but it was all of there just to prepare me for um, cycling in the Mendips and cycling on Exmoor because what a lot of this was this wasn't a lot of miles I was literally cycling to the bottom of uh, uh, driving to the bottom of hills and then just cycling up and down them that's all my training was it wasn't a lot of time spent um, on flat roads and going downhill it was literally just up the hill back down it up the hill back down it so it was all focused on hill intervals um, so yeah getting in those periods of recovery through the uh, through the year and then building towards the um, the peak phases, which was Exmoor and the Breckens, giving myself a bit of time to rejuvenate afterwards. So again, I could hit the peak phase um, with most intensity, getting ready for Brecon. And then obviously, um, right at the end of the year, I had a big deload uh, phase because uh, I went away to Australia. So there was a bit, bit of time off the bike, um, obviously sat around on planes in hotels and so on and so forth but transitioned at the back end of the year and then laid down the base right at the end of the year, ready to build into uh, 2018, which is where I am now. And I guess just to finish the, the, this, this whiteboard presentation, what you've also got is a little graph here of my elevation. So you can start to see there was a general progression with regards to the elevation that I did over the year. So that should hopefully explain that. So again, you can start to track that as you do it. You've also then got the amount of miles. So the amount of miles you can see was relatively consistent throughout the year. Obviously, there's there's drop-offs, but it's generally relatively consistent around that sort of 30 to 40 miles a week mark and peaking out at sort of 50 miles a week and just over. But what it's there to do is you can see my miles were consistent, but what you can see here is my elevation gain was increased throughout the year because again I wasn't really focused on the amount of miles I was doing it was the amount of time that I was spending on the bike that was my target for the year and so through that you can start to see uh, what I was trying to achieve through the year so with your training if you can apply some of these types of principles and adding that kind of clarity and um, 
uh, sort of uh, openness to your training, you'll be able to manage any injuries uh, that come along. Because as you can see here, I did have injuries. Just scroll down a little bit more. I did have injuries through the year. And that again, that influenced some of my training. I wanted to do mend dips the week before, but because of what happened to my back, I've then moved it to the week after. I got through it, just moved it to the week after. So there's all those types of elements that you can that you can mould and change throughout your training. But essentially, throughout what we've talked about, they are some principles of endurance training and how to plan for that. Um, I've not talked about the strength and conditioning, but hopefully you can just see there on the, um, the right-hand side how, again, it sort of fits with uh, the training that I was doing. So you can see the build and peak phases worked with that. You can see my base phases focus more of the intensity in the gym. So this is more higher intensity in the gym. This is more lower intensity in the gym. This is more lower intensity on the bike. This is more higher intensity on the bike. So you can start to see how they mold and change with each other. So hopefully you can start to pick up some of those principles um, that I've talked about. Uh, I've kind of gone through loosely five principles. Um, I could talk about more of them, but I don't want to go into too much detail um, in a program like this. You can obviously come to the workshop and we can talk more about that at the workshops. Um, so yes, many thanks for watching. Hopefully it's been useful for you. Hopefully you've gained a little bit of insight from it. Um, but many thanks for watching. My name is Chris from ChrisForHole.com. I'll speak to you in the next video.